standing by on the phone for us, one of the most outspoken supporters of this hurricane relief package and a man who went to the well of the house today and was very, very vehement about the help that this area deserves and what might happen to those who didn't come through for New Jersey. Congressman Frank Lobiondo. Congressman, first of all, your reaction to the passage this evening. Well, it's a, it's a huge relief, and uh, th this, is, this is for all those in the Northeast, especially uh, constituents in New Jersey, who had such a big question mark with their lives being devastated and ripped apart about how things were going to proceed. So uh, uh, this was a very, very critical step today. Congressman, when you went into the House this morning, were you worried about the, the fate of this bill? Did you think you have the votes or not? Uh, I didn't. I didn't take a sigh of relief until we hit 218. We had so many members who had promised to help and then changed their mind, and people who had a condition that they added on, and something new that happened. Uh, it's been uh, it's been an incredibly intense roller coaster. That uh, really, we we uh, the team of us that were working this, and they were uh, really both delegations that worked very very hard, including uh, Governor Christie. Just I can't begin to say enough about uh, how many members he personally called, uh, explaining the necessity and the urgency. Um, but uh, it came down to the wire, and fortunately, it's a good result for us. As I watched the amendments being offered up, some of them. It talked about stripping away some money aimed for, I guess, uh, the Park Service. Some of it talked about stripping money away from the U.S. Uh, Weather Service. Uh, some of it talked about uh, stripping money away from the Interior Department so it couldn't buy more federal land. Where did these amendments come from? What, what was behind this sort of philosophy? Well, you know, the, they were working under a process where any member of Congress was uh, welcome to and, I guess, encouraged to offer amendments. There were, there were just about 100 amendments that were actually offered. Uh, what you saw today were the amendments that were made in order, and these are from uh, members of Congress from across the country, uh, some of which who were worried about things that were not even in the bill, but they wanted to kind of emphasize their position. Uh, others, I believe, misunderstood what was in the bill, uh, tried to do some clarifications from their perspective, and it's the process we had to work through. You spoke about, and we showed on the air this evening earlier, uh, your speech where you mentioned what the people of Florida had been through in the past and what they're likely to face sometime in the future when they have hurricanes. You mentioned tornadoes in the Midwest. You talked about the San Andreas Fault in California. Did, did you feel that you were being hung out and left to dry by some of your brethren? Well, by, by those members from states that have received disaster assistance, in fact, the statements that I was able to pull up, with the official record from members of Congress from California, from Missouri, from uh, Katrina-affected states, uh, Louisiana, uh, Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, the folks from Florida, uh, all of which, when they had their disaster, they were literally asking for money before the storm was over. In the case of Katrina, they had a $60 billion package that was passed by the House and Senate and signed by the President in a single day, less than 10 days after the storm. And these same members had the hypocrisy to try to suggest to me that either our misery level was not high enough or that we were not important enough or that there was a different set of standards or that, you know, some, some ridiculous, shameful reason of why they were going to deny this federal help. And it was, uh, it was just totally unacceptable. Uh, you know, we, we in the media look for sometimes trends when they don't exist or you know, paradigm shifts when they, when they haven't occurred. Uh, you talk about bipartisan support. There was a joint statement issued by uh, Governors Christie Cuomo and, uh, and Malloy talking about their gratitude for the bipartisan support by you and your fellow members of Congress as well. But I, but I have to ask you, have, has anything changed in the way that you view, because we look at this and we see most of the people who voted against this were in fact Republicans. Has anything changed within your party? Are you feeling any differently now about some of your Republican colleagues? Well, I, I, you know, I have a hard time with, with members of Congress who have the double standard. Now, you know, if there is a member of Congress, I never try to guess what's in their head. I never try to guess where they are philosophically. But when their emergency and their disaster uh, gave them the comfort and initiative to, in fact, ask for, no, let me say demand, that there be federal assistance and the rest of us come to their aid, and now they change, then I, I have a real problem with that. And uh, I've, I did a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, as did 
uh, members of the New York and New Jersey delegation worked very hard on this. Uh, uh, Peter King out of New York was a, was a great colleague. I, you know, w- we've talked, I don't know how many times a day, uh, Saturday, Sundays, midnights, uh, comparing notes, trying to figure out where to go with this. And every time we turned around, there seemed that there was somebody else uh, who uh, had a different set of standards for us. And I, I don't think you can do that in life. I don't think you certainly can do it in the, in the situation we're in here. And this isn't about, you know, some, uh, some wheat deal or something like that. This is about people's lives. Some of these people have lost everything. Some of these people don't know which way to turn. And we're not talking about, you know, 1,000 or 2,000 people. We're talking about tens of thousands of people. We're, to- we're talking about thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of homes and businesses uh, that in many cases were just totally devastated. So for somebody who's been through this, like the people from Louisiana uh, or the people from Florida or the people from California who have to- who've had to look their constituents in the face and tell them, you know, yes, don't worry, we're working for you, to tell me, uh, that the people I represent or the people of the Northeast are, uh, I think they're in a, okay, almost saying they were second class citizens. And that part is totally unacceptable and really hard for me to swallow. Well, Congressman Lobianda, we know it's been a, a very busy day, uh, a very tiring day, and we appreciate you taking the time okay, to share the story. Thanks. Thank you so much, sir. Right.